All right, so why do we want one-to-one -one functions? Uh, so we can find these inverse functions. So let's suppose a function is one-to-one -one with domain x and range y, right? Domain is the x values, range is the y values. And then since every y value has exactly one x, um, the reverse function ends up also being a function, and we call that reverse function f inverse. Um, it looks like a negative 1 power, but it is not a negative 1 power. So f inverse of x does not equal 1 over f of x. It's this special new thing. And then the domain and range are switched. So the domain is now y. So the domain was x. Now the range is x. The range was y. Now the domain is y. So they're reverse of each other. Um, so f and f inverse... Um, will satisfy the equation where f of x equals y, right? So we're going to start with f of x. We plug in x, we output y, and then the inverse just does the opposite. We're going to input y, and we're going to output x. It's called the inverse. Um, so if it's not one-to-one, -one, we can't do this. So one-to-one -one is what allows us to do this, right? Because the y only has one value, one x value, we're able to figure that out. Versus if we have two choices, we don't know what to do. Um, so we need it to be one to one to find an inverse. So let's do some definitions. Um, so the definition of an inverse function, um, if f is one to one with domain x and range y, the inverse is just the opposite. It has a domain of y and a range of x. And the negative one should be up there. Um, so they undo each other. So if I plug them into each other, we just go back to x. Notice when I, in this visual above, I go to y and then I go back and I end back right where I started. So if we do composites of them, if we do f of f inverse, we get x. And if we do f inverse of x, we still get x. So let's check that out with an example because it is kind of weird. But I think this visual above helps, right? We go over and we come right back and we end up with x. So this is a good way to check if two things are inverses. So let's verify that these two are inverses, f and g. So we'll just do composites. And so anytime we do a composite and we get x, they're inverses, assuming they're one-to-one. -one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in g into f. So we'll plug in 5x minus 5, and we'll plug it in for the x in f. So we get 1 fifth, make sure you remember parentheses, 5x minus 5 plus 1. And then let's distribute. So 1 fifth times 5 is 1, so we get x, we get minus 1 plus 1, and we get x. So they're probably inverses, but let's check both directions. So now let's plug oops, f into g. So we're going to plug f one fifth x plus one into g. So by getting again by getting the number x we're basically saying we're undoing each other. So we're getting a y value, and then we're going backwards and ending right back with x. So we plug in x, we go back, and we go back, and we end up with x, right? We go over and over, and we end up where we started. So let's see. Um, let's plug that in. So g is 5x minus 5, so now it's 5. All of this minus 5. We'll go ahead and distribute. So I get 1 fifth times 5 is just x plus 5 minus 5, and we get x. So they're inverses. So this is our math proof to prove an inverse. Cool. Let's do some properties, and then we'll actually find an inverse in this video. So a few properties. Um, I talked about this already, but the domain of f inverse is the same as the range of f. And the range of f inverse is the domain of f. 
Again, they're opposites of each other. I'm going to say that a lot just to really get it in your head. And then y equals f of x is the same as x equals f of y. Right? Again, opposites. The inverse will also be 1 to 1 because the original was 1 to 1 in a function. And then if you do an inverse of an inverse, it just brings you back to the original function. And every inverse is unique, meaning the inverse of f is unique, meaning there's only one. So let's find an inverse and then um, we'll save the rest for another video. Um, so to find an inverse, the first step is to switch x and y, right? Because this is the act of taking an inverse is to switch them. So in this first example, f of x equals x minus 2 over x plus 1. I'm going to rewrite as y equals x minus 2 over x plus 1. And then to take an inverse, we switch x and y, right? That's the act that is an inverse. x and y have been switched. So I am going to rewrite this as x equals y minus 2 over y plus 1. And now we technically have the inverse. We just need to solve for y. So this will be good um, algebra review. It's probably been a while since we've done this. So we need to solve for y. It's super ugly because y is on top and bottom. So I'm gonna get rid of the denominator by timesing both sides by y plus one. Make sure it's in parentheses. Um, so we get x, y, and x on the right side equals y minus two. And again, I'm still solving for y. So it's weird because I have x's and y's. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything with the y to the left side and everything without a y to the right side. It doesn't have to be left or right. Just right. all the y's go to one side, all the non-y's go to the other side. But I'm going to put the y's on the left, terms without y on the right. So let's see, I'm going to subtract y, subtract y. So x, y minus y plus x equals negative 2. And then x, technically it is a variable, but we're solving for y, so it's not in this particular situation. So we're going to subtract x. So x, y minus y equals negative 2 minus x. And we're actually very close to solving, even though it's ugly. So the trick to solving this is now to factor out y. So x, y, and I factor out y is x. And then it would be minus 1, because there's like a little invisible one there, equals minus 2x minus 1. And we're almost there. We're just going to go ahead and divide by x minus 1. And that's my inverse. We finally solve for y. Um, so you can write y equals, or you can say f inverse of x equals. And so that's the inverse of this. And you could check by plugging in. It would be pretty ugly to plug in, but you could. Um, but these are inverses of each other. In the last video, we'll get into graphing and how graphing can check. So since we're almost done with chapter two, I guess um, I'll give you another bonus point. If you draw, what should we draw this time? How about draw a cat? Since I have two cats, draw a cat. Maybe yours will look better than mine. Right, if you draw it on your homework, you can get a bonus point. Why not? My cat is terrible. But yeah, draw a cat next to your name for a bonus point on your um, homework for this section. Cool. So we'll finish up this section in the next video.